I'm in the process of building the best house in Las Vegas, but I just found out my architect quit. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan Pineda. I'm a real estate investor here in Las Vegas. I've flipped hundreds of homes. I've bought hundreds of rentals, but the biggest project I have right now is the development of my personal house. And I've been documenting the process here on YouTube the last nine months, all the way from when I bought the land to when I hired the architect and the builder to the first designs. And even when it went way over budget to becoming over 20,000 square feet. And now it seems like all of that time and all of that money was for nothing. Last week, my architect sent me an email and let me know that he had to resign from the job. And if you're watching this, you're probably wondering, what's the reason? Why did he do that? Well, let me take it back from the beginning when I first hired him. Initially, he was very excited about doing the project, and that is why I chose him over many other candidates. I loved his creativity and his passion for the project, and I really liked his design style. But then, he started to have some problems. He and his partner at the architecture firm broke up, and I had to make a choice of whether I was gonna stay at that firm, since they legally owned the designs, or if I was gonna follow him to a new firm. At the time, it was a pretty easy choice. I wanted to follow him to his new firm because he was the one we'd been working with. And even though his partner was really good and really experienced, I decided that it was better to stay with our architect because he's the one we've been working hand in hand with, and he's the one who actually designed the home. Well, he ended up joining a new company, and I thought that things were gonna go smooth again. But that's when more trouble happened. Our architect started to have some personal problems, which I'm not gonna talk about, but seeing as we had become friends through this whole process, I decided that I wanted to give him his space and let him work through those issues. Now, this is not anything new to me. I run multiple companies with many different employees, and the reality is, in business, your employees are gonna have personal problems. Some are able to do their jobs better than others when they're going through it, but I've seen many people who cannot work or get things done when they're having trouble at home or in their personal life. But as a boss, my hope is that those things are always temporary and that eventually they're gonna snap back out of it and get to normal. And that was my hope with my architect. So I ended up giving him a few weeks, which then turned into a month, and there was still no progress being made. And so I reached out to him and asked what he thought was gonna happen with his life and what was gonna happen with this house. He assured me that he was coming to the end of what was going on and that he was gonna be able to move forward with the project. Well, as you know with the title of this video, that didn't end up happening. About another month passed and he sent me the email letting me know that he had to bow out of the job. Now obviously, this sucks. Not only did I spend a lot of money to get the designs and get to where we're at today, but I spent nine months that I'll never get back. I know I can make the money back. I'm not worried about that at all, but there's no way to replace all of the time lost. But I will say through all of this, I still have no ill will towards our original architect. I still consider him a friend. I really wish him the best and I still think he's a good guy. In fact, he ended up giving me a refund for a portion of all the fees we had already paid him. But here's the thing. As with all business, you have to deal with problems on a daily basis. The reason that we're in business is because we solve problems, not only internally at our companies, but for other people. That's why they pay us. So now looking at this problem, I have to decide which route I wanna go. Other people might dwell on it and get really mad, but for me, it's just a problem I've gotta solve. It just happens to be my personal house and it sucks that it's that, but either way, I gotta solve it and make a decision. Now look, starting over sucks, but for anybody going through a tough problem, you get to choose how you look at that problem. Are you gonna take lessons you learn from it and make it a positive, or are you gonna let it eat you up and bring you down further spiraling? For me as a Christian, I always look to the Bible verse Romans 8:28 which basically says that in all things, God works for our good. And I truly believe that because this situation has a very happy ending, which I'll tell you about here shortly. Now to get to that happy ending, I had to first solve the problem. There were three different paths I could take. Path number one was to have his new company finish those drawings. Once again, just like his old company, that wasn't something I really wanted to do because I chose to work with him. I didn't want to go work with somebody else in his office. Second option was to get another architect who I liked and have him finish the drawing. But like the other option, that's probably not something I want to do, nor is it something the other architect wants to do. They're going to want to create something that is uniquely theirs. And I totally understand that. I wouldn't want to be forced to finish somebody else's work on a project of this caliber. And so that just leaves option three, which is to start 
over. Now we aren't starting from complete scratch because now we have a much better list and idea of everything we want in the house. We've also got surveys of the mountain and our architect now has an idea of where we want things placed and how we want it. So we are actually ahead from where we started nine months ago when we had absolutely nothing. On top of that, I now know I can build a much better house than what I was thinking nine months ago initially. And the main reason is my income has gone up pretty significantly this year. And so starting from scratch with all this new information is definitely not a bad thing. But the reason I say that there's light at the end of the tunnel is because I've met one of the most talented architects I've ever seen. Last June, during my Future Flipper Mastermind, I had a guy named Amr Samaha come in as a new student. We didn't know each other at all. He was just a dude with pink hair at my event. But after talking to each other at the event for a good amount of time, I realized that he was extremely high level and he was working on a ton of really big projects in Beverly Hills. And during that event, while we were building a friendship, he actually offered to design my house for a very low cost. I told him it was really cool that he offered that, but I already had an architect, so I turned him down. But as fate would have it, a couple of months later, I got another piece of land under contract. But for this this land, I was gonna build my next office space. So I called him up and let him know, and eventually he drew me up the craziest office I have ever seen. Now you haven't seen me talk about that at all on YouTube because there are still so many things that need to happen for that to work, but if we are able to do what we expect to do, that office is gonna be absolutely crazy. But nonetheless, when all of this went down, I called him up about the situation and he was super excited to take on the project. And some of you guys might be thinking, why was this guy even going to your office to learn about fixing and flipping houses if he's such a good architect? Well, as I said, he's also a really smart businessman. So he wasn't going to my group to go learn about fixing and flipping. He was going to network with all of my high level students so that he could JV and do developments with them. And in fact, that's already happened. One of my students in Nashville is building a single family home community community with him and another one in Tucson is doing a townhouse development with him. And now I'm building an office and a dream home with him. So yeah, networking is pretty important if you get into the right rooms. And if you wanna learn how you can join my coaching program and be coached directly by me and potentially do deals together, go to futureflipper.com and apply for a call with my team. And also, Amr and I filmed a podcast on my second channel, The Ryan Pineda Show, so make sure you go check out that video after this one and subscribe to that channel. Quick disclaimer though, we talked a lot more about his multi-million dollar watch collection than we did about real estate. But anyways, bad news is how you perceive it. You can think about the bad things and dwell on them, or you can take the lessons you learn from it, make a positive and move forward. And I'm choosing to move forward and do it even better than before. 